Hey, what's up guys? This is Andre or Chokenator if you know me from the stream and I'm going to do my long awaited how to draw hands video. Um, and uh, this is going to be a little different. It's not going to be necessarily a step by step tutorial, but you will see me going through the steps over and over. Um, and the reason you see in the video title version one is because I am I am willing to make this video again. And I want you guys to wa really watch this video. T let me know if it helps you see what you learn. Um, and if you think it can be improved or if there's any questions you have, um, I am willing to make this video again and make it better and make maybe, maybe even the best possible hands tutorial video on YouTube. Um, but without further ado, I'll go into the actual steps that I'm going through. Um, I always start with a box. Um, as you can see right there, uh, it's, it's a box. It's some, for some people it's wider, for some people it's longer. It's usually longer, um, meaning from the wrist to the start of the fingers. Uh, that's usually longer and it's about the same length as the middle finger um, or maybe even a longer than the middle finger and, and really uh, what helps the most is to reference your own hands uh, look at the hand you're not drawing with take a look at it and try to compare the lengths um, and I do encourage you also to like grab uh, reference photos from like Google or something um, and, or some maybe a book that you have with a bunch of pictures of hands and uh, take a look and try to compare the lengths. Um, usually I always start with that box uh, and, and it's a curved box because the bones in your hands don't exactly, they don't really make a flat box depending on how the hand is posed of course because they can stretch out and, and also compress. Um, but it's, it's a curved box. Uh, it's not only curved like uh, the arc of the back of your hand but also there's a curve at the top of it uh, meaning the, the part that your fingers connect, uh, there's a curve there too. As you can see, if you look at your own pinky, uh, your pinky connects lower than the other fingers. Um, but the box, after the box, uh, usually the thumb comes out on the front and the side. It's not really fully on the side and it's not really fully on the front. Um, the, the thumb has a lot of movement and you can really uh, move it all the way to the front of your hand, like the way mittens are shaped, or you can move it to the side of your hand the way a lot of gloves are shaped. Um, and it, it can really move in a lot of places. So you have to make sure that the thumb has this big mass because there's a big muscle there where it connects. Um, and the fingers, uh, I usually like to think of them as like three tubes. They're kind of like box shaped tubed tubes. Um, when the fingers come out, uh, there's three pieces to them. You can see your own, own finger. There's two knuckles or three knuckles really are the places where they bend. Um, and each of those, um, uh, is like its own little section. Uh, and it's important to note that the fingers, they don't exactly, they're not perfectly cylindrical and they're not perfectly boxy. They're, they're like boxy in shape, but with rounded edges. Um, and that's the way I like to think of them. Of course, that's just a very general description, but again, just looking at references and looking at your own hand is going to be the, the greatest guide to figuring out the way things look. But, um, for me, yeah, that's pretty much what I think about. Uh, there's also a little bit of, uh, you know, the, the, the metacarpals in the wrist. There's a bunch of bones uh, that sort of create the wrist area. And there's a, there's a little bit of a rhythm there in the way it connects to the forearm. There's like a little bit of a slant. Um, and you're going to be able to see this in a lot of my sketches. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm looks like right now I'm figuring out, you know, the way the hand bends, um, the way the knuckles move, because there's a fold in the front of the hand uh, where your fingers bend, and um, that allows for uh, the way the uh, movement for the fingers. Um, and guys, I just want to say again that it's always going to be iteration. Drawing the same thing over and over at different angles is how you're going to be able to draw hands. Because there are a lot of hand tutorials are, out there that are step by step, but it usually only goes over one angle. And it's really important to just draw the same thing over and over at every angle, as you can see that I'm doing here. Um, you can see the way the thumb connects on the front and the side. Um, and the way the fingers curve, uh, the way they bend at the knuckles. Um, and I think if you guys really do this, practice this over and over, it's going to be um, uh, how to improve. Uh, also, you can see it, it's not just the box shape, but when, when you do curve um, the hand and your fingers, uh, there are a lot of uh, like little fat pads um, that sort of fold into each other. Um, and it's important to know where they are. And I, I am gonna do a few of those drawings in this uh, video where um, you can see the, the the places where the hands fold. Um, and you can see I'm drawing here the way the fingers spread out. Uh, the way I like to see it too is uh, when you draw the box, um, at the top of the box, uh, between the middle finger and the ring finger, there's a split there. And I, I think I consider that the halfway point. And on one side of that half are the your index finger and your middle finger, and the other side are the ring finger and the pinky. Um, and it, it, that helps in placing the fingers because then 
you can split those halves in half also and find out you know uh where to split uh the index and the ring, uh, middle finger and the ring finger and the pinky finger and um that really allows you to space them out evenly you can see it i'm doing it right here i'm trying to do like a flicking pose um, and I, I remember uh, having a lot of trouble with this pose because uh, the position of the thumb is quite weird. And in order to do this, I was looking at my own thumb. Uh, I was putting my left hand in a flicking pose and trying to get the thumb. Uh, I noticed that the thumb curve here is not, it's not like curved inwards enough. Um, but you can see the entire process, the same thing, the curved box with the fingers coming out. Uh, and uh, I, you can see like that one didn't really come out good. So uh, I attempt the same pose and notice I'm not doing the same pose from the same angle. Uh, I'm trying to think about the hand as a 3D form and doing the same pose from a different angle. I just drew the box. It really comes down to that initial box. That's going to really establish uh, the way the hand is facing. And then the box is usually um, like parallel to the forearm, like in relation to it. Uh, of course, it can curve up and down, but the forearm is the one that rotates it, uh, rotates the whole hand. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to attempt the same thing here with the hand facing us more. And I drew the box in perspective. Uh, and it, of course, a curved box, not only curved at the back of the hand, but curved at the fingers too. I didn't really draw the curve of the uh, where the fingers connect on this one, but uh, it's, it's there. Um, and as you can see, I'm doing it a little better here, getting the curve of the thumb properly. Um, but it really wasn't that great either. And this is why it's important to just practice over and over. Um, here I'm drawing a long finger and drawing where the nail connects. Uh, there's a lot of, um, there's, there's a little bit of skin above the nail. So it's good to draw, uh, the, the way the plane, the angle of the plane changes, uh, when it transitions from finger to nail. Um, and you can see, I started with the finger, but even starting with the finger, I was able to like sort of extrapolate where's the rest of the hand. And I drew the box connecting to it. Um, I think... I think uh, the box shouldn't have been that angular, um, but again, I was looking at my own hand here. Uh, my thumb is actually my thumbs are actually kind of short, um, and my hands are a little bit fatter. But one of the great things about hands is that uh, they really vary depending on the person. Uh, if you have, say, a carpenter or someone like a brick maker, someone who works with their hands, or a blacksmith or something, they're gonna have really thick hands, really strong hands. Uh, fighters will have strong hands. Uh, karate fighters will have huge knuckles. Um, or you can have very dainty and delicate hands, uh, maybe with a, a young girl or um, sort of a weaker person or maybe an old person will have like wrinkly hands or uh, skinny fingers. Um, you can see in that last hand uh, on the left there, um, the way I split up the fingers and the way they're spread out. Uh, that hand came out kind of wide, but that, that sort of demonstrates uh, how they're spread out. Here I'm trying to draw the back of the hand, and you can take a look at the veins and knuckles that appear uh, when you're making a fist with the back of your hand. And really, it's it's going to be all about this. It's, cause it's just going to be doing this over and over, improving at hands. Uh, looking at your own hand, looking at references of hand, and iterating the same structure over and over and over at, everything, at every single angle you could possibly think of. Um, on this hand right there, you can see when you do make a fist uh, on the side of your pinky, there's a lot of fat and skin that sort of bunches up. Um, and you can see that there on that fist uh, at the side of the pinky. Um, here I'm drawing a hand that uh, is sort of like outstretched. Um, a lot of times I decide late which side of the hand this is. I think I decided a little late that the thumb is going to be on that side. Um, and you can see the folds between the fingers. Uh, and you want you always want to compare the lengths. Um, just get used to drawing you know, the middle finger and index finger are longer. Uh, the ring finger slightly... Um, Sometimes longer than the index finger, sometimes shorter, uh, usually longer, I think. Uh, and then the pinky, very, very short in comparison. You can see for my hand, um, the pinky, my pinky doesn't even, uh, the end of my pinky doesn't even come up past the last knuckle of my ring finger. So it's really much shorter, um, very, much smaller, and uh, a lot weaker too. So there's a lot less muscle and fat there. Um, here I'm trying to draw a pose where the fingers are sort of uh, scrunching together. Um, and kind of like a, if you think about like Kung Fu, like a snake hand, something like that. Uh, I try to draw that. Um, so yeah, for you guys, I encourage you in your practice, just keep doing this. Uh, and again, like I notice uh, in this right here, the one on the left and the one I'm drawing right now, uh, those two are the same pose. Um, so I, 
it's it's good to draw the same pose. Like you don't always have to vary the poses. You can try if you're having trouble with a pose, or if you really want to understand a pose, draw the same pose at a different angle. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm really trying to vary the structure, but practice is all about uh, just repeated just repeated process over and over and over. And eventually you just get better and better at it. And it sort of builds your mental library. Like mental library is really, really important in drawing, meaning uh, remembering what the forms look like in 3D um, so that you can translate it into 2D. And that's what drawing is. So uh, you can see I'm drawing a hand here with skinnier fingers doing sort of a finger gun pose with uh, two fingers there. Um, and it looks like I decided to draw some long nails just to accentuate the length of the fingers here. Um, I didn't quite place the nails perfectly, but uh, you pretty much get the idea. And I think that's actually, that came out to be a really good looking hand. I think I could see that hand showing up in in like a comic book or something. I think I did that one really well. Um, and you can see, I think I'm actually improving as this practice goes. And this was about an hour long session. Here you can see I'm trying to draw a thicker hand with a little bit more fat um, and a little bit more muscle. Uh, and you know, the longer your sessions go, the more you will get used to improving uh, the structure of the hands. Um, I think in the ring finger, the angle's a little bit off there. Um, I, it looks like I don't go back to uh, go and improve it, but my mental library has gotten better where I can actually recognize, okay, that one looks off. I should go back and fix it. Um, and if I were practicing that now, I probably I probably would have done a better job than I did that time. Um, so you can see uh, that this one, you can really see the way the thumb connects. Um, yeah, just pay attention to the thumbs uh, because you know I think that the the actual palm and the fingers are actually not too difficult, but placing the thumb properly is all about knowing where it connects and knowing the angle of the connection. Um, if you guys want, I can also do another video where I actually do it step by step. Um, but I wanted, I really, with this video, I wanted to show you many, many hands. And I want to show you a speed up of what practice should look like. Because even if I show you a tutorial of hands where I, where I do it real time and I do a few hands, I want you guys to be drawing like dozens of hands because hands are so common uh, for every character. You're going to be drawing two hands, you know, left and right, maybe even four hands, depending on how many arms your character has. Um, so uh, here I'm showing where the folds are in those hand in your hands and people's folds are different. My hands sort of have an M shape in the middle of it where the folds are, but uh, everyone's folds in their hands are different. So maybe take a look at your own hand or pictures of uh, other people's hands, especially like uh, really wrinkly hands or even babies hands, like really smooth young hands. Um, you want to take a look at the variations in the types of uh, folds and wrinkles that there will be. Um, here I'm doing a little bit more gesture oriented drawings uh, there at the bottom right. And that's pretty much it for my practice there. I'm going to pause the video there and you can see I drew, um, I don't know, a, a couple dozen hands here. Um, and that this is what practice should look like. Uh, for me, you know, these aren't the strongest hands and these are all mostly sketches. So I could go back, for example, and uh, I could go and uh, fade them out, uh, decrease the opacity of this layer, and then really clean up uh, the outlines of the hands and maybe even do some hatching. Uh, but this should be, uh, this is a really great way to start your gestures of your hands. Um, just have that box, have the fingers coming out, uh, understand, and it really won't really look great the first, when you first start doing it. But if you understand the structure and you keep looking at references and keep comparing your drawings to your references over and over, your mental library is gonna build and you're just gonna get better and better and your hands are gonna look really good. Of course, I don't think I have the best hands in the world. I think I have the basic structure down. I think some of these, like like this one looks great and this one looks great. Um, and some of them don't, don't look great and that's just how it's gonna be. Um, but what, what's important is practice and constant improvement. Some days you'll have bad days, some days you'll have great days. But I really want to encourage you guys to practice your hands. Let me guys, again, this is version one. If you guys like this video, if you would prefer a step-by-step -step or a real-time video, uh, I'm totally down to do that. Just let me know anything I can improve and I can make version two as soon as you guys let me know. All right, guys. So I hope that helped. Um, and I will see you guys soon. Peace out.